time we have a pair of speakers that we want to introduce to you and have them come and to share briefly. Um, our second speaker, I'm going to go in reverse order, so our second speaker that you're going to hear from, Tara, is uh, just a huge help to those within our community who are in need being able to get them into recovery programs. So Tara Mason is with the Hope Dealer Project and Martinsburg goes purple. And so Tara will be coming up in just a few minutes. But first, our initial speaker we want to welcome to the stage is the pastor of Destination Church. Please welcome Steve Moan.
anybody see that? Yeah. yeah. I want to share something with you guys since uh, since this is about awareness. I want to share something that God gave me when I was in treatment because I'm I'm in recovery almost seven years now. How many know that God is the restorer of all things? You know, over and over again, I heard people say that God could never use me again and God was done with me and, you know, everything that God had prophesied over my life was over. That's not the God that I know. Because God took something horrible and turned it into something else. So today I'm going to share the message that he gave me while I was in treatment. I mean like acronyms. You know, when you get into addiction, you become chained to your addiction. So this message is called Chains. How many know that our lives are choice driven? Every choice you make has a consequence. Whether for good or for bad. In the beginning of addiction, you can make a choice, well, I think I'm going to use today, or I think I'm going to drink today, or you know, you have a choice, whether you might want to or not. But then if you keep making those same choices, then it becomes... It becomes a habit. Well, if you continue making those same choices, it becomes... Automatic. So it's no longer, well, am I going to use today or not? It's you wake up and you call the dealer where you at and what you got. It becomes automatic. Well, if you continue making the same choices, it becomes your identity. How I many you know that? In addiction, we lose our identity. I mean, that's just the way, that's the way it is. We lose sight of who we are. We actually become our addiction. And then people identify us by our addiction. Oh, that's that drug addict. That's that loser. That's that bum. That's that drunk. All the stigmas that they use for people that are in recovery, in addiction. But how many know that my past doesn't define who I am? But if you continue to make the same choices, it becomes your nature. Your whole life, I'm sorry, your whole life gets wrapped up in your addiction. Everybody you're around, everybody you talk to, everything you do. If it doesn't have to do with addiction, you don't want nothing to do with it. Because you don't want to be around people who are going to tell you what you're doing is wrong. How many times have you hung out with people who didn't like who you were? We just don't do it. So it becomes your nature to base everything in your life around your addiction. And then... then you're stuck. Well, how do you change your chains? You start with changing your choices. God said in his word, he said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. If the drugs are your God, serve them. If I am your God, 
serve me. So as you begin to change your choices, your chains begin to change. So I began to make different choices. I began to pray and I began to read my Bible. It became a habit until it was automatic. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I was on my knees praying to God. And then I was in the word trying to find something new and fresh for today. And it became a habit. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to make a choice. It was automatic. And then it became my identity. See, they no longer called me that drug addict, that loser, that bum. But now they call me Pastor Steve. Because my addiction doesn't define me, God does. So my identity is in Christ. And Christ said, if your identity is in me, you are therefore a new creation in Christ Jesus. But so many times, those of us who've never struggled with addiction, we kind of get stuck in the fact that we don't understand why they're there. Many times in my addiction, people said, well, just quit. Man, if I'd have, if I'd have thought of that, <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, it's not about just quitting because it's not about just what I do, it's about my perception. My perception was I had no identity, I had no value. But when God began to validate me and he began to give me my identity in him, things began to change. It became my nature. I surround myself with people who are going the same direction I'm going, doing the same things I'm doing. And now I'm stuck. But I choose to be stuck. I changed my chains. Paul said I'm a prisoner to his grace. I'm no longer chained to my addiction, but now I'm chained to Christ. And the grace of Christ. Paul went around crucifying and killing the Christians. And after God he had an encounter with God, he went around as a minister of the gospel, setting people free. God takes what the enemy meant for bad and turns it around for good. As soon as I got out of treatment, my feet hit the ground. I hit the ground running and I began to teach people how to get out of where they were. So when God sets you free, can't keep what you don't give away. If you found Christ in salvation, you can't keep what you don't give away. This is not just a recovery message. It's a message for all those in Christ. Because if we don't change our choices in life, and we don't make it a habit, if we don't make it automatic, if we don't keep making the next right decision, the enemy's still waiting. And I promise you it didn't get any better out there. And your addiction's still waiting for you. But I promise you there ain't nothing new. It's still jails, institutions, and death. It hasn't changed. But the message is the choices you make determines the change you live in. The choices that we make every day determine the change that we live in every day of our life. If you chain yourself to Christ, you chain yourself to a firm foundation which can't be shaken. So, how many know what you're chained to today? One person? 
We're going to do an altar call. Um, those of you that ain't chained to Christ, we're going to invite you up to get saved. Come on, man. There's got to be more than one person here. I hope you know what you're chained to. I tell you, Lisa, if that young lady picked up one more instrument, I was going home. I mean, when they gave out musical talent, when God was giving out musical talent, now I know why I didn't get any. She got it all. <laughs> Praise God. Are you enjoying the concert? It's awesome. I felt challenged. I didn't want to get up after that. The only talent I got is this. And that's not very exciting. I hope you guys have got something out of this message. I use it a lot because I believe in it and it works. Not just with addiction, but also with salvation. 